What's up guys, Justin Linder, LPSFab.com, Linder Power Systems. Uh, back again. Um, it's about time I start tearing into this transmission. I got a little bit of free time here today. Not much, but a couple hours. Uh, so I'm going to start getting into it. Uh, I ordered a Bentley manual, but it's not here yet. So I've kind of just watched a couple videos and this and that. Not a transmission guy at all, so I'm totally fumbling through this. Um, you know, just kind of whatever tear into it um, so I watched a couple videos uh, I've already taken all the bolts out of the bell housing um, and the little uh, these little little locator pins out of the side of the case the uh, the shift linkage wasn't in this transmission already so it's just been kind of sitting around it was at least out of the weather looks pretty grimy but I think it hopefully it's in good shape so We'll tear it apart and see. Uh, so I've taken all the bolts out. I've taken this case cover off the fifth gear cover here. Uh, and basically I'm ready to start tearing this thing apart. Uh, these two big torques, they're T60 torques, are the first things that really have to come out uh, along with this fifth gear shift linkage. Uh, and from what I've seen, I, I was kind of lucky that this thing must have already been in gear because uh, how you usually get these to keep from spinning is they can spin freely. So what you do is you shift the transmission manually into another gear and then you pull that shift linkage out and then you can shift this fifth gear in manually and that locks everything up so that you can, you can torque against these bolts. Uh, so let's see how, how this goes. Yep, no problem on that one. So those are coming loose. So now that I got those kind of loose, I'm going to pull off this uh, this fifth gear linkage. These are uh, eight millimeter, I believe. Yeah, eight millimeter triple square. So these little these little pins here. Maybe I can get you guys a little closer. So these little pins should come out. That holds your fifth gear linkage. I'm trying to kind of keep all these parts together over here with their bolts and things. Since this is all new to me, fifth gear linkage comes off, and then we should be able to finish backing these bolts out. I'm going to try to remove everything kind of as a stack. So these two big Belleville washers I believe are the same. They look identical. Yeah. I'm still going to keep them with their their uh, perspective sides, I think. Now we got to figure out how to pull these gears. I have to go get a little pry bar. I don't have a puller that'll get on there, but hopefully they'll come off easy. Yep, I might have to go get a puller. That's pretty stuck. Let me pause this and see, go see what I got. All right guys, so I'm back. Um, 
after a bunch of fuckery and, and having to actually go and uh, borrow some tools, I was able to get this, this uh, fifth gear hub off um, with a puller, uh, enlisted some tools of my neighbors and also some expertise from one of the guys over there who's a transmission guy. And we, uh, we ended up actually pulling this whole thing apart. So, so I can show you guys the process, I kind of put it all back together. Um, so he had a two-job two puller that was able to pull this hub off. Um, the fifth gear slider kind of popped off. I pulled on it too hard and it went past the detents and parts exploded everywhere. But I've looked at all those collected. There's a little, a little spring in there and uh, some things like that. But um, let me get you guys closer here again. So basically all this stuff comes off real easy now. So that's the fifth gear with the synchros. That's the synchro there. I'm just going to kind of pile these up in, in order so I know where they came from. And then there's a, there's a couple bolts here. There was two that I missed when I was first taking all the bolts out. There was one here that was real dirty, so I couldn't really see it. And then there's another one down in this pocket here. And it's pretty deep down in there. So that one has to come out also before the case can come apart. But once you get the case knocked apart, it comes apart pretty easy. And then that exposes your whole gear set. Um, so this is your shift linkage, obviously. Uh, those little locator pins, these guys that are in the side of the case, those are actually what go in and locate that shift linkage. Um, gives it a spot to rotate around. Um, but that just kind of slides out like that, all as one assembly. There's no real need to take that apart, I wouldn't think, unless you like bent something. Um, so we'll just set that aside, clean it up later. Um, and then fifth gear, or not fifth gear, but reverse. Uh, there's this bolt here that has to come out. Um, so loosen that Torx and then the whole fifth gear assembly can come off. Let me put this down. Not fifth gear, I keep saying fifth gear, I mean reverse. Reverse! Um, so there's your little re reverse shift linkage. And then... reverse gear so this is reverse gear and this is the gear that basically attaches it to the final the final drive on the main shaft that little reverse gear assembly and then as long as you have the bolts out on the underside of the uh, the bell housing the four bolts that hold that pinion bearing in the whole gear set just comes out as a unit so just basically grab both of these and just lift them out. Boom. Just like that. And then your diff can come out. Everything just lifts right out. So it's really not that complicated. I'm not sure why I've been so scared to get into transmissions in the past because <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty straightforward really so um, I think what I'm gonna do is try to uh, there's some there's some races in here that I'd like to replace this uh, this pinion bearing basically on the end of the main shaft that 
that's showing a little bit of wear on this on this transmission, um, and that's a, a spot that's known to break, be a breaking point in the transmission. So um, I would like to replace that, but getting that race out might be might be pretty fun. I might have to like order a special special puller for that. Um, but with that being said. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is just go clean the crap out of this case. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to go soak it in degreaser and uh, and then uh, pressure wash it all um, and then dry it real quick so none of the bearings that are left in there rust or anything. Um, so I'm going to do that and then I'll be back. All right, so I've been spending the last about three hours cleaning this case, uh, this transmission case. I'm soaked um, from pressure washing, uh, but I got it pretty darn clean. Heck of a lot better than it was. Uh, I, uh, I used some degreaser and then pressure washed, washed it. Um, Bit of an announcement. I got some new of new uh, bottles of the awesome orange from the dollar store, and I regret to inform you that I think they've changed their their uh, formula because it doesn't work near as good um, as it used to. So that sucks. Um, but I degreased them, and then I used an acid wash solution for cleaning aluminum, uh, kind of to clean them after that, so to get kind of the oxidation off of it and stuff. And it's still a little bit oxidized, uh, it's kind of a gray color, but it definitely helped a lot because that thing was really ugly and brown and burnt on grease and oil. Um, but that being said, uh, the internals I just kind of I just blasted off with uh, brake cleaner um, as best as I could, kind of cleaned everything up somewhat. Um, I am going to have to take some of that stuff apart to replace some of the bearings. Um, but before I get to all of that, I need to go through this differential swap. Um, so this is the stock diff. I've got the, uh, the OBX diff, and I've done a bunch of research on that. And uh, let's, let me put this down for a second. Okay, so I've done a bunch of research on this OBX differential. Uh, it's a Torsen style, uh, internally geared. Uh, typically, they're pretty strong uh, as far as like the quaves and stuff. This is obviously a Chinese brand, so it's probably not up to par. But I did a I did a bunch of research, and it turns out they're pretty good if you do a couple things to them. Um, so one is replacing all these bolts, these Chinesium bolts that hold it together with good uh, USDM grade eights, um, you know, from a trusted source like McMaster or somebody. And then uh, there's some Belleville washers down inside these things that kind of put tension um, on the assembly from internally. And what those are is they're a little they're a little concaved washer that acts as a spring. And there's a stack of them in there uh, that basically acts as a, a spring pack to, to put pressure against the inside internals in there and keep them all riding correctly. Um, but the ones that come in the OBX diffs are, again, some sort of Chinesium. And they're known to, a lot of them are broken as soon as you get the thing. And a lot of the other ones break you know, in a short amount of time destroy themselves. So if you replace those th two things, uh, supposedly they, they work really well and they're pretty strong. So I'm going to do that. The other thing we need to do is get this ring gear off of the stock diff and then bolt it to this new uh, diff and using uh, these ARP fasteners. So the shitty part is is that these are big rivets, they're not bolts, and they basically have to be either ground off or machined off um, in order to get that ring gear off. So that, I guess, is the next step. Um, the other thing 
try not to get too dirty again here, but the other thing is, is I need this speedometer gear off of here, so I'm going to have to pull this bearing. And one major point that the, uh, the OBX diffs do not come with the little insert, the little nut insert uh, that your, uh, your axle cups bolt into. So those have to be pulled out of here and made to work with this um, when we have it apart. So uh, I guess the first order of business is to get this sucker all apart and get the parts we need out of it. And then I'm going to tear into this OBX diff and uh, see if we can make everything work and jive with each other. So uh, that'll be the next thing. So I'm going to work on figuring out how I'm going to machine those off and I'll be back. Alright, well I had a look around the internet and I couldn't really find anything that wasn't just a bunch of guys uh, kind of grinding away and hammering on stuff, so uh, without getting too archaic, I decided to try to go from the other side and try to drill out the, uh, the rivets. There's a nice kind of punch center point in them from this side where it'd be easy to drill, so uh, I'm going to do that and see if we can get anywhere. They're actually pretty soft, they're drilling really easy. Alright, so I got all the heads of the rivets knocked off, but there's still like a little bit of deformed flange that's keeping this thing from coming off. So I think instead of just hammering on this thing and possibly chipping up this gear, I'm going to set this up and just press this whole differential assembly out of the gear. Cool thing I just figured out with this OEM differential, since it's an open diff, to get those those uh, little nut certs out that I need, all I gotta do is rotate these planetary gears around and they pop out. So I don't even have to get I don't even have to drive that pin out or anything like that. Um, so that makes it a lot easier. And there's the two little nuts I need. So that was pretty easy. So now all I need is that speedometer gear, so I'm going to have to pull these bearings, or at least this side. But I think I want to pull both sides, uh, because that way I can measure between the, the bearing surfaces on each end, and make sure that that spec is the same as the width on this OBX unit. Uh, that way uh, I know that the factory shimming would be right or not, um, or at least give me an idea. So I think I'm going to try to get both of those bearings off, uh, but I'm going to have to wait for a tool to show up, uh, a bearing splitter tool. So, so while I wait for tools to show up, I kind of wanted to talk about what I've learned about how, how synchros work. Um, so this is the fifth gear, and uh, basically this is the actual synchronizer, the synchronizer ring, synchro. Um, and if you can tell, that that gear has a, a taper on it and the inside of this synchronizer has a taper on it um, and what happens was is as this selector slider tries to shift it into the locked position so it slides over and locks this second set of teeth here as it does that it puts pressure on this synchronizer gear and when that synchronizer gets pressure on it, it acts as a brake up against that taper. And it slows down the gear to match, to mesh the speed of the, of the transmission, basically. 
and and then it'll kind of slow it down enough to where as you're putting pressure on that slider it'll click over into that next set of teeth which then locks that gear into place so um, basically what you're what you're checking for when you're checking synchros is the gap if you push this up against that taper there's a spec for that gap in between those two hopefully you can see that in between those two uh, gears so there's the, the actual gear and then there's the synchronizer and that gap supposed to be like 40 to 60 thou this looks like it's at least that so um, so that one's in good shape and most of the rest of these on this gear set look really good um, as far as the gaps go but on this second gear um, it's a little bit suspect because the synchronizer is actually really really skinny and it looks a little weird to me I don't know if that's just the way it is but from my reading the first gear and second gear synchros are the same part and the first gear one looks real fat and healthy so um, even though the gaps are okay I could tell this transmission had been opened up before because this dowel pin was all destroyed um, so what I'm thinking might have might have gone on here is that um, whoever had this transmission open before was maybe having some second gear first to second gear shifting issues and instead of replacing that synchro maybe they just machined off the back side of it or something um, or maybe I'm crazy and that's just the way it is but uh, it just looks strange to me and I know it's supposed to be the same part number so since I have to take this assembly apart anyway to uh, change out some of these bearings I'm thinking that I might uh, I might just replace that second gear synchro while I'm in here so um, I mean it, it's really difficult to, to say whether or not it's been monkeyed with um, but just from looking at it it just seems a little off to me and I'm sure it probably worked as a fix because if if that gap gets too small on that synchronizer and that and it starts hitting this flat surface before it's locking up or breaking on that taper then theoretically you could just machine off this backside to give it more gap um, but when the parts only 50 bucks I'm kind of thinking that uh, you know that might be a, a better way to go is to just put a new one in there um, so anyway I just wanted to kind of share share that um, I'm kind of learning transmissions as I go here so hopefully I can share what I'm what I'm learning and pass it on to you guys so um, anyway uh, I'm waiting for tools before I can do anything else so um, I'll continue these videos when I get tools so let's uh, let's tear into this OBX diff and see if we can uh, figure it out and fix all the weak weak points in it uh, I've already tried to break one of these bolts loose and they're really tight uh, but the back side here has a couple flats on it so I think I'm going to go grab it in a vise um, and then break these bolts loose. Uh, this little kit I got comes with the new bolts and the Belleville washers. Uh, it's from a guy I found online from doing a Google search on these diffs and uh, he had a lot of good information on there and he sells those little kits for to upgrade these diffs and make them a little more reliable. Um, so, I'm going to try to find his website again and post a link down below. Let's see if we can break these loose now. Oh yeah, no problem. It was just hard to hang on to, I think. It also seems like they're all torqued to a different rate, which is not awesome. <laughs> they do have some Loctite on them, it looks like. All right, now that all those are loose, I'm going to go back over to the bench and, uh, and finish pulling this thing apart. Right. 
Yeah, I can tell these are pretty cheap bolts because uh, the one I hit the rattle gun on before I broke it loose uh, already deformed that hex pretty bad. So they're pretty soft. Uh, so I'm just going to shit can those. I'll actually, I'll actually probably throw them in my bolt bin for later. All right, so let's see. So it looks like this whole assembly is coming apart here. I'm trying to carefully do this so that I can tell how those Belleville washers are stacked in there. These do seem really cheap and flimsy. So here's how they're stacked. So the two center ones are face to face with the concaves pointing towards each other. And then the two outer ones are opposite of that. So pretty self-explanatory. Um, and that goes in between the center gear here. But I need to pull all this out so I can drop these in. And they don't quite fit. So I'm going to go ahead and put these new Belleville washers in the way they need to go. So I don't have to worry about that anymore. So one facing away, facing each other, facing each other, and then the last one facing away, and then this little gear helps capture them. We'll have to kind of make sure those are centered when we put this bolt this back together. So that came out like that, so it flips like that. I'm going to stack it right there. And uh, these guys. So basically these need to fall into the into place in these little gears here. And they don't quite fit. It looks like just the OD, the, the flange part, doesn't quite fit in there. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick a bolt in this and stick it in a drill and I'm just going to go hit the edge of it on a belt sander until it uh, is the right size. So I used one of the bolts that came out of that diff um, just to kind of hold it in my drill and uh, ground down that outer flange just enough. It kind of snaps right into place now. So hopefully both of these gears are the same and uh, it'll work, both of them will work. Okay, so this one needs to be dropped down in there. This one goes in here. Probably use this bolt to help me get it down in there. Looks perfect. This Belleville washer assembly goes in like that. Let's see if I can get it down in there without it falling apart. Alright, so I'm going to very carefully kind of line these all up because I can't really put pressure on them until I bolt this thing together and uh, if they're not lined up just right it's going to pinch them 
because they don't fully seat down in those steps. So hopefully that'll be good. Drop this gear back in there. This extra bolt came in pretty handy. Okay, so this has got a funky bolt pattern on it. I think. Ah, it's got a dowel pin. So there's a dowel pin location here. So it's basically just missing a bolt. So that's how this gets clocked. So that dowel pin, which is basically lined up with that slot, goes like yo. So hopefully, I think what I'm going to do is, I plan on Loctiting these, um, but I think what I'm going to do is kind of slowly snug them up. Hopefully we can make sure we feel and see if that uh, those Belleville washers are lined up good. And then we can pull them back out and uh, I probably only need like four of these in here. Pull them back out and lock tight them. So it's really hard to tell. I think what I might do to be a little more sure is uh, pull this back apart. I might stick those washers together with some grease to help them stay centered. Basically what I'm looking at is these little gears have a, a countersunk side in them that captures those washers, but they're not, uh, they're not captured until it's all the way compressed together. So if they're not totally centered, it could pinch between those gears because there's two of those that capture all those, those washers. So. It's a little bit concerning. Um, and they kind of center themselves. They're, they're just about catching themselves. Because they're just about deep enough to, each one just about deep enough to capture three. So the, the only one that I'm worried about is the center two. If you guys do this, you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. But I think what I might do is stick a little grease on them to keep them centered. So I'm going to do that. Okay, so it captures those ones. I'm going to put a little grease on the inside of this one to keep it centered. Oh yeah, that's going to work good. I'm not using a, a lot. I don't want it affecting the oil in the transmission. Oh yeah, that's going to be a lot better. I'm a lot happier with that. Yeah, I like that a lot better. Alright, so putting this back together. Alright, so that should make this thing uh, actually reliable. So, $400 differential. A little $35 bolt and washer kit and uh, and the kind of more expensive uh, bolts for the pinion gear or the ring gear uh, but beyond that should be pretty sweet so these are all grade 12.9 bolts um, a little more substantial than some Chinesium bolt. So I'm going to go stick this back in a vise and get a bigger wrench out and start torquing this thing down. Alright, so I went to torque down the bolts in this uh, differential. It turns out the new bolts that that guy sent me in the kit are 5 millimeters longer than the ones that came in it. And they're actually bottoming out in the threads and, and binding up before it actually gets tight. So I contacted him, he's sending me new bolts, no problem there, uh, super, super good customer service and everything. Um, but I've got the old bolts in it holding it together and I have to press in 
these new ARP studs into the differential housing uh, so that I can bolt on the ring gear. Um, so what I'm doing is those got to go in the hole, right? So I'm using a socket on the back side to capture the bolt, give it some place to go, and then I'm just clamping it in my vise. They basically fall right in. I probably don't even need to press them. It's actually a little concerning because I think they might spin when I try to torque them. So, I'm not sure what to do there. So basically, uh, you guys are seeing all the problems I'm running into with this little diff install. Um, don't get discouraged. This is cars. Even high quality parts a lot of times come with, you know, not quite fitting right, or you got to grind here or there, or you got to figure out how to do something you wouldn't normally do. That's just part of putting cars together. Any, anytime you're adding aftermarket parts, uh, you're always going to have to work through problems. So um, I'm going to think about this one, and uh, yeah, we'll uh, see what I come up with. Alright guys, I've been filming this tranny video over about a week, so as I have time, I'm not sure where I left off, but uh, basically where I was at is uh, the bolts they sent me for this, this uh, differential for the upgrade bolts were a little bit too long and they were bottoming out in the threads and uh, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't, basically they'd bottom out in the threads before they'd get tight. So, uh, so I contacted the guy. Uh, Rick Bryant and he got me some new bolts pretty much straight away uh, pretty good customer service there uh, but I've been thinking about a couple things and we put the we put the little washers in, in here for the axle cups so the, the axle cup bolt can stay in there hold in there um, but one of the things if you've ever tried to put axle cups in a Volkswagen tranny uh, is there a real pain? You have to squeeze them together somehow and get the bolt started. And there's one washer in here that has about a quarter inch of uh, slop, if you will, so it can actually fall farther away. And I thought about that and I was like, well, when we get the tranny together, that might make it really hard to get that axle cut bolt started. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tear this thing back apart one last time and I'm going to find a little wave spring. I think I have like a sample of something that, that one of the companies I deal with gave me. And uh, I'm going to use a little spring to keep that in place um, so that when we do do the axle cups, hopefully it's a, it's a lot easier. Alright, so these are the china bolts. They're coming out and staying out. So I'm set these over here so I don't get them mixed up. This guy coming apart one last time. This one is fine. This one sits right up against the gear. So that one's fine. It has a nice flat surface. That surface sits right up against the gear. I actually had to bevel that just a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. Boop but I just had to bevel it just a little bit in order to get it to sit flat in this gear. So it's really real flat there. It was sticking up quite a bit before so I, I just put a little chamfer on that inner lip because the inside of this gear has an angle to it so I kind of tried to match that angle. Just to look the slightest bit, I only took maybe 30 thou off that corner. Um, I just did it on the belt grinder uh, but now it sits real flat. So that one's good. So this is the one I'm talking about. It's the, the deeper one in there. The one that connects to the far axle cup. 
and when you stick your little cup washer in there with the threaded hole it sits pretty far down I got that in there crooked but it sits pretty far down off that surface so uh, I'm gonna try to find like a spring or something that I can hold that in place uh, maybe even we could even tack it uh, you know with weld uh, but I'm gonna try to find something that's a little easier Might have to grind on a little more too to make it fit a little better. But um, yeah, so it's got about a quarter inch or so that it can uh, kind of flop around in there. So um, I'm gonna do something. Let me see what I can figure out. Okay, so I got this fitting better down in here a little bit, a little more. Just ground a little bit off the edge a little bit and did a little little bit of that chamfer like I had on the other side. And it sits flatter and uh, it drops right in there. So, uh, And then I found this wave spring. So this was like a sample from a company. I use a similar spring for my alpha lock couplers. Um, so they sent me a sample pack and that one was in it. And that one seems like it, it might work. So. Um, Basically, I'm going to pack that in there on top of that deal, so when it compresses, it'll hold that washer in place. So, I'm going to go with that. Let's put this all back together. So we have this central gear. There's two little gears that go inside of it. And then there's some counterboards in there that house these, these uh, Belleville washers. And the stack goes in like that, so the two center ones are facing each other, the two outer ones are facing away. I don't know if you guys can see that. I put a little grease on them to help them stay centered when you're bolting the thing together. Uh, but basically those get captured in these two little gears in their counter bores. And then those get captured by this center gear. And then as you bolt the thing together, it compresses it all together and helps keep spring pressure out. So, so it's a little tricky to keep all these washers centered and uh, get the whole thing to mesh together the way it's supposed to. And that new spring I've added is making it a little trickier still. Yep, perfect. All right, so I'm going to start Loctiting these other ones and torquing them into place, and then we'll pull out these this front and back one and, and Loctite those when we're done with these other ones. Using blue Loctite, uh, medium strength, removable, not the red stuff because you'll never get them back out, uh, but these will come out with a little bit of force or a little bit of heat if you need to. So if you ever did need to take this thing apart, it'd be possible, but at least it's not going to fall apart on its own. So taking those first two back out, put some Loctite on them. It's really pretty sweet if this diff works out and doesn't break or anything, but these couple little upgrades, it's a pretty good little unit for uh, 400 bucks. All right, so these get torqued to 28 foot-pounds, according to the, uh, the Rick Bryant's website. Um, so, I'm going to do it in kind of a star pattern, like with anything. There, that part's done. All right, if you remember these uh, ARP bolts for the ring gear, uh, didn't really press into the hole. They were kind of loose. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to test one to see if I think it's going to torque up. Um, if not, we're going to have to figure out a different way. But they're supposed to be torqued to 45 foot-pounds. No, nope, they're going to spin. So I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to tack all these in place with the welder. So I think that's my only option. 
But try not to get any heat into them really. Just enough to keep them from spinning so I can torque them. Alright, so I'm over here uh, at my little bench. Uh, this one, I'm using 309 rod because I have no idea what these metals are. Um, and that's basically a really good choice for dissimilar metals. Uh, number 12 cup, uh, 093 tungsten, sharpened to a point. And uh, about 100 amps or so DC. So I'm just going to go ahead and try to tack these on. Hopefully this isn't like a pot metal or something where it's going to blow out on me. Looks like it's going to be no problem. But no. You guys can see that. So I'm just going to go around and do all those on one side and then go back around and do them all on the other side. Alright, those should torque up fine now, but I'm going to wait till this thing totally cools before I torque anything because I don't want it to, the heat to make it grow and then when it shrinks back up, my torque would be off. So I'm going to wait for it to totally cool and then I'll go back and torque all those bolts. Alright, so this thing's almost all the way cooled down, but I still need to put assembly lube on all these nuts. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing that. And, uh, get ready to torque this thing down. I'm going to get them all kind of put in place and by that time it should be cool enough to to torque on it. I'm going to go grab a Q-tip, my little Q-tip trick. Q-tip works really good to get the uh, assembly lube all, you know, fully into the threads and everything. Um, so I'm putting a little on the nut on the face of the nut, in the threads of the nut, and then around the threads of the, uh, the uh, stud. And we'll just send it back on. So I'm going to do that to all the bolts. I'm sure you guys don't need to watch this, so we'll be back. All right, so this is all cooled down. I've moved over to this other vise because it's a little easier to get the torque wrench under there. Um, the reason I'm doing this kind of upside down is because this diff only has the flats on one side to grab it in a vise with, so a little easier to do it in this one. So I'm just torquing these all to 45. Oop. My torque wrench came apart here. Start over. 45 foot pounds. In the star pattern again. Torquing up good now with those tacks on there. This is just part of building cars. You gotta solve problems along the way. And if you don't have all the right tools, it becomes a lot harder. So, you know, things like welders and things are almost a necessity when you're doing aftermarket modifications. At least to make your life easier. A couple of them are definitely still moving, so good thing I'm going through them twice. Alright, good to go on those. Okay, so I've just spent about the last half hour figuring out how I'm going to get these bearings off of this old differential so that I can get this, uh, this speedometer gear, this plastic speedometer gear off of here. Uh, so I've got this rigged up. The bolts weren't long enough for this, this bearing puller, this race puller. 
uh, but I was able to drill the holes out and use some studs from some of my machining clamps, um, my hold down clamps, toe clamps. Uh, so I just had to drill, ream the holes out just a little bit to make them work, uh, but I think it's going to work. I'm only able to grab the cage on here, um, so hopefully it'll hold good enough to pull the race off. If not, I might be screwed and I might have to buy a, uh, buy a new speedometer gear, but we're going to try it. So this is just, this is just a kit I got off Amazon, I think it was like 35 bucks. Yeah, it's coming right off actually. No problem. So I'm using the kit, extended bolts, a socket, and then a little piece of metal over the socket to, to uh, push against with the puller. But it looks like it's coming right off. Yeah. No problem. So there's my ring gear. Comes off like that, goes back on like that. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and pull the other side off too if I can. Because uh, I'd like to get a measurement between those races and measure it compared to the, uh, the OBX diff to see if my clearances in the tranny are going to be right still with the OEM shims in there. Uh, worst comes to worst, I'll have to order a shim kit, but I'd like to uh, avoid that if possible. Yeah, I got a lot of pressure on it so far and it's not budging. Let me go clamp this in the vise and we'll keep wrenching on it. Alright. It's like it might destroy this cage before it pulls it off of there. Let's see. Well, it's starting to come. Awesome. So that wasn't too bad. So now I'm going to go set up to get a measurement uh, across those, those, basically where the race sits on there. Uh, and theoretically, if that's the same as the new diff, if I put new bearings on there, it should be right clearance-wise. So hopefully that's the case. Okay, so what I've got here is I've got this diff, the stock diff, sitting over here on this surface plate. Um, I have it sitting on a couple of one, two, three blocks. These are ground blocks, they're precision, so they're within like a couple tenths. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a measurement across this one. I have this sitting uh, kind of out on the race area, so it's not on the radius that's inside on the race. Um, so it's on the flats for sure. So, uh, And then I'm going to just take a measurement here. That one's a little bit... Got a little bit of a step there, uh, so hopefully we're on it. But we've got 5.1, really close to 5.1. It's 5.10, it's about 5.103. So, 5.103, I'm going to write that down. Now we can make, do the same measurement with the OBX diff, the same direction and everything. Five point one. I'll tell you, it's within two thou, probably. And I think that one actually had a little step on it from where, so it was probably supposed to be two thou longer, if I was guessing. So it's on the money. So I'm gonna, <coughs> excuse me, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, press the new bearings on with the uh, speedometer ring in place and the differential should be done. 
Okay, so I've got the uh, differential set up in my press over here. Uh, kind of got a stack of stuff on it. I, I got a flat plate right on top of the uh, bearing and then a stack of stuff to get make up the space. Uh, I had to lower the, the table on the press down because uh, it was too, didn't have enough clearance for the diff to fit in there. Um, but I'm not going to use the air over hydraulic. I'm just going to use the hand pump so I can feel it and make sure, hopefully I can make sure it's not binding. This is a 50 ton press so it could really damage stuff if you, if you just send it without being able to feel it. Looks like it's going right on. Yeah, so that's not quite bottomed out, so I'm going to have to figure out a way to find a piece of tube or something to, to put on that race in order to get it to go all the way. So they make bearing cup kits that would probably make this job a little more straightforward, but I'm just using whatever I can find around the shop to uh, hopefully get me where I need to be. Yep, that's seated now. I got some pressure on it. So now I gotta do the other side. This side should be a little easier because I can just set it up across a piece of flat plate instead of having to span it. Which I probably could have done on the other side too to be honest. But. I like to use aluminum as blocks just because it's a, it's a softer material and it's not going to damage the, the tougher steel of any of these, these parts. Um, so I like, to, I like to use that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this flat plate again at first to get it started to make sure it's flat and uniform to the, to the surface that it's going down onto. No problem. All right, so that diff is done. It's ready to go. So now it's time to uh, start doing some of the races and bearings in the case. Uh, might save that for another video. We'll see. Yeah, okay, I think I'm going to save the rest of the assembly and, and stuff for the transmission for another video. Um, we have the diff all together, transmission apart and cleaned. Uh, the diff's rebuilt with better components. Uh, we've kind of inspected the gear set and, and seen how the syn synchros work. Uh, so up next is going to be replacing some of the bearings on the gear set and, in, and the races in the case the, itself. Um, but I'm definitely going to save that for another video because this video is going to be really long as it is. Um, so next time, uh, if you're liking these videos, please subscribe and tag along and if you have questions or comments, please comment below and we'll see you guys.